Hey everyone, today's video is another one of the most common triggers for Meniere's disease attacks, and that is drinking caffeine. So, if you have Meniere's disease and it's unstable, meaning you still have symptoms, I think you're going to want to watch today's video, so let's get into it. So again, the basics, uh, Meniere's disease is endolymphatic hydrops, sometimes called cochlear hydrops. Basically what happens is you get increased fluid pressure and what amounts to swelling inside your inner ear. And because it's encased in bone, there's no place for it to go. So the pressure goes uh, where it can go. And what it does is it crushes your cochlea and it can interrupt and uh, disturb your semicircular canal. So basically what it causes is vertigo, tinnitus, hearing loss, and you can get these different attacks, right? And Meniere's attacks are terrible because you get an acute rapid onset of usually rotational vertigo, so bad it usually causes vomiting. Tinnitus can be really loud. It can be roaring, it could be uh, whistling, it can be all kinds of different distorted noises. And then long term though, you get enough of these attacks, you start to get uh, kind of like day-to-day -day disequilibrium and day-to-day -day dizziness. So Meniere's attacks can be caused by a lot of different factors depending on the person. And we've talked about weather and hormonal changes. And today we're talking about caffeine because caffeine's totally ubiquitous, right? It's everywhere. You can find it in so many different kinds of drinks. But we have to start with how could caffeine affect what's going on in your inner ear, your unstable Meniere's ear? Well, and I'll try to keep it simple, but technical enough for you people that care. Number one, caffeine antagonizes adenosine receptors. Now, what that means to the you outside your ear is that's what makes you be a little more alert. That's how caffeine has its sort of stimulatory effect. Now in the vestibular system and the cochlear system, basically adenosine is a neuromodulator. It affects how much firing of the neurons goes on attached to your semicircular canals uh, and your cochlea. So caffeine antagonizes that and basically what it's going to do is destabilize that, which we don't want because you already have an unstable system if you have Meniere's, right? You already have a system that has problems and so drinking something that's going to kind of throw sugar in the gas tank is not what you want to do. Now the second thing, uh, big thing that caffeine does is it can activate this thing called the renin angiotensin aldosterone system and basically what that does is it increases your blood pressure and increases your body's fluid pressure. And that's not necessarily what we want to do either, right? Because we already just said a second ago that we have increased pressure inside the inner ear. So doing something that's going to increase the pressure more is probably not something we want to do. Now, related to that, and I'm going to kind of speak about it generically, caffeine can cause large fluid shifts in physiological compartments. And let's just, let's just suffice to say we don't want large fluid shifts uh, in many years because we already have an unstable ear, right? We already have an unstable system. And there's different fluids in the inner, which I don't have time to go into, but there's perilymph and endolymph. And we just don't want to do things that are going to make that fluctuate a lot, right? Now, the last way that caffeine can affect Meniere's and cause attacks is it does affect your immune system. You might not have known that. Caffeine can decrease something called the T helper one arm of your immune system. And it can also boost the T helper two arm of your immune system. And if you can just imagine like a little teeter totter, and yeah, I'm, I'm totally simplifying this. If you imagine a teeter totter, right? If you boost one thing or decrease the other, you're going to cause an asymmetry. Or you might cause what we what we call a polarity, which we don't necessarily want because if you guys don't know already, uh, Meniere's is a heavily heavily immune system influenced condition. Over the last 20 years. I, Almost every single Meniere's patient that's made it to me has got some kind of immune system problem. Now, it's not always the same immune system problem, but the immune system is almost always involved and successful treatment almost always entails dealing with that immune system problem. And so taking something that's going to influence your immune system and you don't know if it's good or bad is really, really dangerous. That's why uh, in my practice, one of the things I do is what's called uh, lymphocyte immunophenotyping. It's basically finding out your immune system fingerprint. Uh, it lets you kind of directly measure what's going on with someone's immune system. Uh, in fact, I'll just show you this example here, right? Because this lymphocyte map, this test, actually measures, and I'll, I'll circle it, actually does measure your TH1 and your T helper 1 system and your TH1, T helper 2 system. It actually measures the amount of those cells. Caffeine can decrease the amount of this T helper 1, which may not be okay for you, depending on your phenotype. 
And that means you really ought to be working with someone, a doctor who understands all this stuff I'm telling you, not just that you should eliminate caffeine, but why? Because in a deeper meaning, there could tell you more about what you need to do for successful treatment if we know what your immune system is actually doing. So reducing caffeine and eliminating caffeine is something that you know most ENTs or neurotologists are gonna tell you to do along with eliminating alcohol and that kind of stuff. But I think it's important for you to understand why is that happening? Because the more kind of knowledge you have, the more or the less chaotic it feels to have this condition. Believe me, I kind of know what it's like in years. I have tinnitus and I've had a few episodes with the tinnitus flares up and the vertigo. So uh, I'm kind of on board with the whole Meniere's process and it stinks. Uh, Meniere's attacks are debilitating. Their terrible quality of life is, is not good if you're having recurrent attacks. So. What should you do with this information? Well, I'm gonna tell you that you probably shouldn't be drinking caffeine uh, or be drinking the minimal amount of it. And you know, if you think you might have Meniere's and you've got a first degree relative with Meniere's, uh, I wouldn't be drinking caffeine at all. I think it's just too risky. So I got more videos coming on the different triggers for a Meniere's disease attack. I hope you found this helpful and I'll see you next time.